Now, I know the administration will say that our P5 plus one partners will not follow us, that the sanctions regime will collapse, and that they will allow Iran to proceed as if they weren't worried in the first place about Iran crossing the nuclear weapons capability threshold. I heard similar arguments from Secretary Kerry when he was chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee, as well as Assistant Secretary of State Wendy Sherman, Assistant Secretary of the Treasury at the time David Cohen, and others, when I was leading the charge to impose new sanctions on Iran. That didn't happen then, and I don't believe it will happen now. Despite what some of our P5 plus one ambassadors have said in trying to rally support for the agreement, and echoing the administration's admonition that it is a take it or leave it proposition, our P5 plus one partners will still be worried about Iran's nuclear weapons desires and their capability to achieve it. They and the businesses from their countries and elsewhere will truly care more about their ability to do business in a U.S. economy of $17 trillion than an Iranian economy of $415 billion. The importance of that economic relationship is palpable as we negotiate TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership Act. And at this juncture, I think it's important to note that an AP story acknowledges that uh, over history, Congress has rejected outright or demanded changes to more than 200 treaties and international agreements, including 80 that were multilateral. Now, whether or not the supporters of the agreement admit it, the deal is based on hope. Hope that when the nuclear sunset clause expires, Iran will have succumbed to the benefits of commerce and global integration. Hope that the hardliners will have lost their power and the revolution will end its hegemonic goals. Hope that the regime will allow the Iranian people to decide their fate. And hope is part of human nature. But unfortunately, but, important, but unfortunately, it is not a national security strategy. The Iranian regime, led by the Ayatollah, wants above all to preserve the regime and its revolution, unlike the Green Revolution of 2009. So it stretches incredulity to believe they signed on to a deal that would in any way weaken the regime or threaten the goals of the revolution. Now, I understand this deal represents a trade-off a hope that things may be better in Iran in 10 to 15 years. Maybe Iran will desist from its nuclear ambitions. Maybe they'll stop exporting and supporting terrorism. Maybe they'll stop holding innocent Americans hostages. Maybe they'll stop burning American flags and maybe their leadership will stop chanting death to America in the streets of Tehran. Or maybe they won't. I know that in many respects it would be far easier to support this deal as it would have been to vote for the war in Iraq at the time. But I didn't choose the easier path then, and I am not going to now. I know that the editorial pages... I know that the editorial pages that support the agreement would be far kinder if I voted yes. But they largely also supported the agreement that brought us a nuclear North Korea. At moments like this, I'm reminded of the passage in John F. Kennedy's book, Profile and Courage, where he wrote, quote, the true democracy, living and growing and inspiring, puts its faith in the people. Faith that the people will not simply elect men who will represent their views ably and faithfully, but will also elect men and I would parenthetically update it to add women, who will exercise their conscientious judgment, faith that the people will not condemn those whose devotion to principle leads them to unpopular courses, but will reward courage, respect honor, and ultimately recognize right. And he goes on to say, in whatever arena of life one meets the challenges of courage, whatever may be the sacrifices he faces, if he follows his conscience, the loss of his friends, his fortune, his contentment, even the esteem of his fellow man. Each man must decide for himself the course he will follow. The stories of past courage can define that ingredient. They can teach, they can offer hope, they can provide inspiration, but they cannot supply courage itself. For this, each man must look into his own soul. I have looked into my own soul, 
and my devotion to principle may once again lead me to an unpopular course. But if Iran is to acquire a nuclear bomb, it will not have my name on it. It is for these reasons that I will vote to disapprove the agreement and, if called upon, would vote to override a agreement. Thank you, and may God bless the United States of America.